Hi Pisces, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I am going to be doing your October 31st, 2020 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. And if you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be located in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let's clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. And I want to apologize for my voice, I do have a bit of a cold. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from your body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as you enter into the safe and loving space. Awesome. Let's let the bowl sing. As I move your Queen of the Moon and your Moonology cards, over to the side. These will be layered on top of the tarot to really give Luna, to really give the moon a voice of her own. So let's see here. How will Pisces be affected by the October 31st, 2020 full moon? How will Pisces be affected by the October 31st, 2020 full moon? How will Pisces be affected by the October 31st, 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. Ooh, okay. And I have to just say that this full moon is is a blue moon and it's also on Shawin. So this is a very, very intense moon and this Shawin element is really calling to you during this time. It's really bringing forward the the elements of the moon card, which is, of course, you in the Major Arcana. So I just had to address that right off the bat. So angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. Awesome. Now on the left-hand side, this is your inner self. The middle is your heart, your emotional self. The right-hand side is the public arena and your public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. And we have the moon laid out all right here for you. We have the three of pentacles, the seven of swords, the star. I love that Aquarius energy coming through. Very strong for those of you born on the cusp with Aquarius. Time frame, January 20th to February 18th. And then you have the eight of cups. You're walking away from something you once thought you would love. A powerful ending is here. The Page of Cups, you're a student of your heart, which is absolutely beautiful. It's also connecting you with the new moon in Scorpio. Then we have Temperance, balance coming in. The Nine of Swords, nightmares coming forward. The Hermit, the repeat of the number nine here, which is really cool. You're coming very close to the end of a cycle, but you're also facing a lot of fears that have held you back before. And it's because you're finding a balance within your heart and within this student kind of looking for a new way forward, questing, seeking, discovering that you're doing. And you have the, the Ace of Pentacles. So this is a gift handed to you from God's source spirit. However, you see the divine, the universe. You're not quite taking it quite yet, but let's see. You have the Ace of Swords. So another gift from God's source spirit. You have the Two of Pentacles 
and then you have the nine of pentacles. Now you have three nines. So you're very close to a completion of a cycle. All right. And what's really cool about this cycle, it has to do with your financial prosperity in your, in the public arena, you are finding a balance. It's like things were out of balance. Now you're claiming a balance for your prosperity, for the way forward. And these blessings of knowledge and of of wealth or something you value as much as money are really coming in and really leading you forward. And we'll see if you if you take them fully. If like the magician is your end card, your subconscious card, then you definitely take these gifts fully. But here there's there's the option of taking them. And it doesn't say that you have to, all right, because it's not showing that but it's saying you have the option of taking them and really running forward with it. So this is a time of great gifts being being given. But with the repeat of the number nine, these gifts come forward. You're facing a lot of fear, so there's knowledge that's coming forward. If you find, you can find yourself, Pisces, breaking a cycle that has kept you small, that has kept you quiet, that has kept you fear-based, okay? It's kept you a victim instead of a victor. And you're, you're changing that arena. You're turning inward and you also have the arena here of going from pauper almost to prince, you know, to going to a place of prosperity, of wealth, of abundance, of what you value as much as money coming into your life. And that I see here as super, super cool. So this is just an extraordinary moon. Again, it's, it's the full moon in Taurus. So it is the most solid and the most sensual of the moons, which is an energy that you play so beautifully off of. And then we have the blue moon, coming into play, which is believe in the impossible. So you have the blue moon, which is calling you towards patience, towards building a solid foundation, towards the building of internal power and taking a step back, saying, take a step back, look at what it is that you desire, look at what it is that you want, because as you see things more clearly, more openly, more honestly, as you're more truthful with yourself, you build the solid foundation and you embrace the sensuality, the, the loveliness, the it's just this powerful energy of knowing that you're following your path, knowing that you're following your dreams. And as you do so, this is not time where you really want to rock the boat. Though I do see you preparing here for a big change and you're walking away from something. You're like, you know what? It's not right. It's not fitting. It's, it's not really moving me forward the way that I need to. So you, you are changing things, but you're doing so in a very steady, calm, you know, prosperous way, but you're really also connecting with your power, with yourself. And this is a time where you're going to feel most comfortable in things of comfort, you know, in, in a bit of a routine, you'll find that you really settle into a routine, which you're very fond of. Anyway, Pisces, you'll find yourself really gravitating towards a routine during this time. It's a time to feel cozy, a time to feel warm, a time to feel secure. And as you build that security within your life, you're going to feel more and more and more as if you're moving forward the way that you need to be moving forward. And during Shaman, during Halloween, this is a time to release what no longer fits us. So what no longer serves a purpose in our lives, we are you know, purging from ourselves. And that's really quite powerful here with the Eight of Cups. And as you do this, you face, you face fears, but you also face difficult truths. And it's like, okay, you know what, this I'm afraid of, but why am I afraid of it? You're going to find that you search deeper. And as you search deeper, you're really connecting with ancestral energy during this time. You're connecting with your ancestors. You're connecting with ancestral wisdom. You're connecting with past life selves and wisdom that was gained from there. And you really see yourself breaking the chains and things can get rather emotional during this time. But this is a time of tremendous power to you as you surrender to the divine as you surrender to this power, this brilliance, this purpose forward. It's like, oh yeah, I can do this. I can do this because there's more to me than I realize. I can do this because there is a greater power around me, leading me forward, moving me towards what I desire. And come the 15th of November, you have the new moon in Scorpio. And this is the purging of the poison. You know, this is saying, work through your fears, work through what has held you back? What has kept you small? What has made you doubt yourself? What has had you think, oh no, I can't move forward this way. You know, oh, this is for everybody else, but not for me. It's like, no, we're working through these fears and we're embracing a new beginning. We're embracing a way forward that we hadn't expected, that we hadn't anticipated. And this brings us to a new start, a new start within our lives, a new start within ourselves, a, a way to sit back in peace and really 
really embrace that hermit energy. And I know you might be thinking, you know, with the state of the world and everything that's gone on, I've had enough of the quiet, you know, contemplation. I've had enough of the hermit time. Well, now you you're looking at things more openly, more honestly for you to see yourself stepping through that gateway, stepping through that portal into a new beginning. I always see the new moon as very beautifully connected to the god Janus in Roman mythology. And that's the god whose name was given to, to January. That's where our word January comes from. It's the god of beginnings and endings. It's the god of portals. And that's what you're going to see during this time beginnings and endings, portals moving you forward, doorways that you thought were locked to you or that you couldn't, you know, walk through. You're now seeing yourself walk through them. And I do apologize if you can hear my dog in the background. And this then leads us to the full moon in Gemini, which is on the 30th of November. And the full moon in Gemini is this moon of answers. And it says the answers you need are coming, but it's also the full moon eclipse during this time. So conclusions are within reach. You're starting to see things come to a head. Come the 30th of November, all right, you are going to see things moving forward, having you realize things more openly, more honestly for yourself, answers coming that you need, that you truly desire, that you are seeking. And it's helping you embrace your dreams, helping you plant those seeds, helping you look at what's more. And during this time, it's having that light of prosperity shine on you. And that's going to be so important because you're going to sit there and you're going to think, oh my goodness, you know, I can't move forward this way. These blessings can't come or this is somebody else's doing. No, it's taking credit where credit is due. You're coloring, you're embracing the prosperity, the power, the brilliance, the abundance of your life. And that light is shining down on you. And as it shines, it moves you forward in a better understanding of yourself of what you desire, of what you need, of what you're looking towards. And that is going to be coloring the way that you move forward. And as you do so, it is opening up the doors for you to take your knowledge, take your understanding, leave some things behind because they're just not needed anymore. And as you leave behind what isn't needed, you move forward towards where you are supposed to be, towards what you desire, towards what you truly need. And as you embrace this, you embrace you. And as you walk through this doorway of greater understanding, of greater knowledge, of greater truth, it's like, this is my preparation. This is what I need. I'm not coming to this battle like unprepared. I have gathered up my wisdom. And this is what that moon is. It's, you know, your dreams need a practical plan. You are firmly rooting yourself in your dreams. You're having that firm foundation of your dreams, of your desires, of your hopes, of your fears coming forward. Yes. And that's why... Spirit said before that Shaman, that Halloween is really embracing the essence of you, Pisces, because it is taking the spotlight of who we are, all right, which is what the moon does. And it's taking the light of day and it's giving it its more silvery, calmer light. And it's taking that spotlight. It's looking at what we desire. It's looking at what we want. And it is saying here that there is brilliance within us as long as we face the shadows, as long as we face the fears that hold us back, as long as we move forward in truth. And as we do so, then that's when the stars start shining. Because what is the sun but it's the closest star to us? And the stars here, of course, the light reflects off the moon. That is what gives the moon its light. And you're looking at the highest form of your perfection. You're looking at the highest form of what you truly desire, the stars in the sky, you know, the jewels that our ancestors looked up at and were awed by. They guided their lives by the stars. They told stories by the stars. They gave the stars their names. And so here, there is such a powerful connection to you and, and the stars above, towards the dreams above, towards the hopes, towards the aspirations, towards what it is that you truly want within your life. And this is your, this is your soul's wish coming forward. This is what your heart wants. This is what you've longed for. And it's not what you cross your fingers and say, oh, I wish for this. I wish for that. It is what your soul is longing for. It's what your heart is longing for. And spirit sees it. Divinity sees it. And it brings it into the arena. And then it has you walking away from what you long, no longer love. It's like there's an end of a cycle here. There's an end of a way of being. And this is an ending as severe as a divorce. It doesn't mean that you have to be getting divorced. It means that you are ending in a powerful way. And I didn't get to, I got so excited and so caught up. I didn't get to your spirit animals because this ending here, it is 
it is very linked to the spirit animals that are a part of you, the crow spirit and the dove spirit. Now, this is for one day. One day in October, you have these spirit animals, but it's on one of the most powerful days. So here, with, with the crow spirit and with the dove spirit, you have such contrasting animals. You know, such contrasting birds. You know, they're of the same species, but they're, they're so different. One is a harbinger of peace. We see it as a bringer of peace. The other is a harbinger of death. We see it as a sign of chaos, a sign of destruction. Because in ancient times, when a battle was fought, you know, and the bodies lay spewed on the ground, the crows came, the ravens came, the vultures came, the animals came to eat the mess that we created from our hatred, from our, our, your, our anger. And so here, that's still what we associate with crows. We don't give them the credit for being as smart as they are, just as we don't give that credit to ravens for being smarter than parrots. So here, with the crow, you are co-creating with spirit. This is forcing you to change, forcing you to change how it is that you perceive things, what it is that you desire, as you're taking up your, your knowledge, as you're taking up your mental, as you're moving forward. And this is almost like the Ouroboros, you know, the serpent eating its own tail. It's the taking what we have destroyed and it's having it nurture us. It's the wisdom that we gain from that understanding. So it becomes our sacred law. And this is trusting our personal integrity and intuition and speaking our truth. For you, Pisces, speaking your truth is going to be so astoundingly powerful. And this is then personal transformation. And it brings messages to you, brings realization. The dove spirit, right, right here, is a messenger of peace. We have the dove in the Bible that shows you know, that brings us the olive branch. We have the dove said as a sacrificial object, a, a sacrificial being at the temple, you know, the pure white dove. And so it holds such power to it. It holds an idea of purity and of cleansing and of hopes and of dreams. And here with the dove spirit, it says, be peace, be what you want to see in the world. Be that peace, be that hope. It brings us messages of peace and of hope, especially when our hearts are hurting and whose heart isn't hurting during these times. It's gentle compassion, and it's releasing you from the pains that hold you back. And that is a powerful, powerful combination, especially on the time when the spirit world is the thinnest, especially at the time where inwardly you're looking at a prosperity shining down on you and a light becoming a part of you and it moving you forward to a place that you hadn't anticipated to a place that you might have thought was completely out of your reach. And it's like, no, now it's time to embrace the stars. And I love how you have the pink roses here or the white roses, depending on how you look at it. You know, white for purity, light pink for a gentleness and a compassion. And then you have the red roses for love and passion and, and fire and truth. And so here, then it moves us to the snake spirit and the eel spirit. And the snake spirit is, it says here, time to heal. So the snake spirit brings us healing, which we can see as being a, bit, a little bit incongruous with the idea of the snake. It's kind of like, watch out for the serpent's bite. But with the snake spirit, you know, the snake has two main forms of imagery in, in our culture that come first to the forefront of my mind. One is the Asclepian, the staff of the two serpents and, and the staff in the middle, you know, and that is the sign of a healer. That's the sign that the doctors use to this day. And then we have the, the tempting serpent that brought the fall. Well, the temp tempting serpent brought the fall out of what was secure, out of, you know, out of a paradise, which, you know, you can argue is man's evolving of mind once we leave childhood and once we know that pain is, is a part of living. And you can argue that, yes, you know, some children know that pain is a part of living, you know, instantaneously, but, you know, that's a horror and not, an, you know, thank God, not a norm. And so here with the snake and the healing, this is the opportunity to heal, to shed a skin. And as we shed the skin, it can bring us to feel a bit vulnerable because a snake is vulnerable when it sheds its skin. It usually finds a nice, quiet, you know, place to molt. And as it does so, it loses its eyesight. It becomes a little bit more aggressive than usual. And this is our fighting, the change that is happening around us. And being more kind of aggressive to the world that, that we're a part of. 
And it's important here to trust the transition and to embrace the energy of change as we heal and as we we embrace kind of that fall, that that coming in of knowledge that maybe we didn't want, but that is absolutely necessary. And then it leads us to the eel spirit, which says, bring your ideas to life. You know, illuminate them into this world and don't be shy to bring your, your ideas to the forefront. But this is also embracing your emotions, embracing your strength, embracing your foresight as you as you take in what you desire, as you look at what you want within this world. And as you do so, there's a power here. There's a power that you're stepping into. And it has you at your heart, being a student of your heart. Now, this also makes you a student of working through your fears. So you're going to be really finding that you call yourself out a lot here at Pisces. During this time, you're like, no, I, I'm a student, I'm learning, I'm taking on new information, but I'm also ending what isn't right. You're really taking the proverbial bull by the horns and going after what it is that you desire. And as you do so, you're being anointed. You're, you're having blessings come in. You're looking at things more openly, more honestly, more courageously. And then that leads you to temperance, to balance. It's like as you take up your truth and as you move forward, as you leave things behind, that it's like, okay, yes, it defines us, it shaped us, but it isn't the heart of us. You know, it defined us at one point because our hurts, our pains, and our disappointments always do. But it doesn't get to be the sole defining factor of us. The balance comes in. We pour the waters into the pool of ourselves, into our light, into our understanding. And what's really beautiful here is that the waters pour forward. Yeah, and they're pouring on a lotus flower, on a flower right there, if you see that. And they're pouring into a pool. But in the Rider Waite Smith deck, they pour into the cups. They're poured into each other. Nothing lost and nothing, you know, nothing sullied. It's a gaining of knowledge. It's a gaining of understanding. As day turns into night, night turns into day. And time rolls forward. And we are constantly evolving. And this temperance, this balance, this Sagittarius energy, this, you know, looking at our truth and where we want to be. And I don't know if I gave you the time frame, but it's of November 22nd to December 21st. You're, you're looking at this and you're, you're finding a deeper way forward. And you're also connecting with people more openly, more honestly. And it leads you to the Nine of Swords. It leads you to, to as you have this opening of the mind. And I think it's very powerful that you have the imaging, imagery, imagery, there we go, of you know, the cups pouring over, the, the jugs pouring over. It's like this knowledge blessing you, anointing you, coming forward, going over your heart, going over your mind. It brings forward the doubts and the fears and the million deep different reasons why you should sit, stay small, why you should stay silent, why you shouldn't move forward. And it's like enough is enough. Enough is enough. Because for our whole entire lives, we can stay silent. We can stay small. We can stay... We can stay just completely detached from our purpose here on earth. And here it's like, no, I'm done. I'm done. Because you're turning inward and you're having this prosperity being given to you. And it's like, there's a world, a greater world for you than you even realize. And as you're looking at this and as you're taking this in, <coughs> excuse me, and as you're seeing yourself move forward, you're looking at things so much more openly, so much more honestly, so much more passionately for you. And you're, you're turning inward towards your light, towards your truth, towards your greater understanding. And this is where I need to be. And this is my truth. And this is my ascension forward. And this is my connection with my heart. And nobody else gets to tell you, Pisces, how to connect, how to move forward. You might have people completely on your side saying, okay, do this. Like, let's move forward this way. Let's do this. That's different. Nobody gets to take away the peace that is a part of you, the silence that is a part of you, the connection to the greater extent of what you strive for and what you desire. This is quiet contemplation. And this is the release of the poison of what you fear that has taken root. And it takes root in everybody. It's not just you, Pisces. And it's like enough is enough. It is time to face these fears. It is time to state difficult truths. And you'll see it coming. 
you know, around Halloween, you'll, you'll see this desire. And I say around Halloween, since you are very moon sensitive, just as an individual, because of course you are represented by the moon. You see this strength, this power, this, this healing energy coming around you, this sense of, you know, a destroying what has fallen and taking it back and kind of replenishing it as part of you. And it leads you. It leads you to the Ace of Pentacles. It leads you to God, Source, Spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing you a gift of prosperity and also handing you a gift of knowledge. And in the public arena, you're going to find a shift. You're going to find that you're not held back the same way that you once were. You're going to find that you're looking at things differently. And there's a strong urge forward of cutting through doubts and fears, of knowing where it is that you stand, of you know, claiming the prosperity, of looking at the seeds to be planted in your life. And not being held back, not saying, oh, no, I can't do this. Oh, no, I can't move forward this way. It's like, oh, yes, I can. And it's like, come hell or high water, I will. And it's claiming this prosperity. It's claiming this bounty. It's saying, this is mine because we do not have you claiming it fully here. But for all intents and purposes, Pisces, this gift is being presented. You can walk away or you can say, thank you. This is mine. Claim this gift. Move forward in this power. Divinity is planting seeds of prosperity, abundance, wealth, what you value as much as money, and knowledge, which can never be taken away from you as you cut through doubts and fears, as you know your mind. And it brings you to the Two of Pentacles. It's like you're trying to balance everything else, but you're not balancing yourself. It's like stop. Stop the chaos. Stop foolishness and balance you. Embrace your balance, embrace your understanding, embrace your wisdom, embrace your truth, and then start to balance. And then you can even find that you add on more and more and more. Not so much that it becomes overwhelming, but you add towards your strengths because you know yourself so well. And that's why you have this connection here with the, with the hermit, okay? This powerful connection of you moving forward. But the fear is that you'll never get there. Is that you'll take on more and more and more and it'll just be failure after failure after failure. It's like, no, no, you're done with that. It's not you're done with failing because nobody's done with failing and that's, that's just a part of life and who we are. But you're done with not being balanced, being on the crickety, old, terrifying bridge, you know, trying to balance what you need, not having your arms really to steady you. And it's like, okay, walk it, do it. It's like, no, no, I get to balance me. And I get to find a more prosperous way to carry what is so dear to me. And it's so f interesting. I've looked at this, these cards a million times. And I never really noticed the bumblebees. No, actually, I never noticed the bumblebees. And Spirit just showed them to me. It's like sweet results await. Your hard work pays off. Being that worker bee, being that gatherer, being that gatherer of information, that gatherer of, of the pollen to create the sweet honey that is a part of your life. That is so powerful for you during this time and it leads you to this place of prosperity is there hard work ahead yes because the nine of pentacles is the prosperity that comes but then the harvest that needs to be gathered you know it's the work isn't done but it's job well done it's hard work paid you know paid attention to crafted discovered you know looked dead in the eye and said okay i move forward I move forward in this truth. I move forward in this power. I move forward in this understanding. And I will not be held back. The nine of pentacles is determined success. And it's because you walked away from something you thought you would love, but you don't. And that's okay. It's a divorcing yourself from a... I see it like a... Like a leech... It's like you pull that leech off of you, okay? And you turn inward and you see where your prosperity lies. You see what your powerful truth is. And it blesses you. It moves you forward in wealth. It moves you forward in prosperity. It moves you forward towards beauty. Will people be jealous of this? Yeah, most definitely. But you know what? You have to start looking out for you, Pisces. How will Pisces be affected by the October 31st, 2020 full moon? How will Pisces be affected by the October 31st, 
2020 full moon. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. How will Pisces be affected by the October 31st, 2020 full moon? How will Pisces be affected by the October 31st, 2020 full moon? How will Pisces be affected by the October 31st, 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. Okay. So we have here gratitude, nourishment, and sovereignty. You have the queen of the moon herself showing up. That's awesome. Will. Don't let the past hold you back. Over the nine of swords. Oh my gosh. Have faith in your dreams. Emotions are running high, most definitely. Communication is key, very strong connection to the Gemini full moon on the 30th of November. Show the world the real you. It's time, and it's that Aquarius energy coming through again with the stars, you know, coming through now in the moon. So we have gratitude over prosperity, over the, um, over the knowledge that we are taking. It's like gratitude for everything that we have been through and everything that we move forward in. And it brings us to a nourishment of our souls and of ourselves as we connect with our greatest power, our greatest truth, our soul's desire. It brings us then to a walking away in the sovereignty of the moon, which is the sovereignty of you, Pisces. Where there's a will, there's a way, there's a power, there's an anointing, there's a balance that comes forward. And it says here, don't let the past hold you back. Don't let nightmares, don't let fears keep you from your destiny. Have faith in your dream. Have faith in your dreams as you move forward in your passionate power and in your brilliant truth. Because as you do so, emotions run high as you get these gifts from spirit coming forward. And as you have these gifts come forward, communication is key. As you find your balance, as you find your harmony, and you show the world the real you, as you embrace the prosperity that you've always known you were born towards and born for and that you've been moving towards your whole entire life. And now it's time to take it and claim it and let this be a part of you. Your subconscious Luna message, starting with the queen of the moon, is the masculine. Yeah, you have the divine masculine, the divine feminine coming forward. This moon is a powerhouse of energy for you. It's a powerhouse of your truth. And as that energy comes forward, it says here, it's time to release negativity. As you have the strength and you have the, it's, it's like they play off each other. They're both strength and force and will and kindness and compassion. And it's the whole spectrum. It's the whole balance of, of that creative energy. And then you have a very strong connection to the new moon in in Scorpio, where it says here, it's time to release negativity. It's time to release what has held you back. And as you release this, it brings you to the subconscious tarot message, which is the King of Pentacles, which is prosperity, which is that beautiful link then here to the full moon in Taurus. It's you taking that gift of wealth, okay? The gift of, of knowledge, okay, is something that you might be toying with taking, but the gift of wealth subconsciously it's becoming a part of you you're claiming that throne you're putting that crown on your head and you're moving forward in that wealth in that prosperity and in that bounty and there is nothing and no one that will hold you back all right pisces i hope this reading has resonated with you i wish you nothing but light love peace and happiness may harmony always be with you and may you have an absolutely blessed moon Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we move forward in our passion, in our power, in our beauty, in our truth, 
connecting with the aspects of ourselves that at times we have denied and finding the balance of our greater power in our lives. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Pisces.